Hey guys, Jason at Hard Money Bankers. On this week's podcast, we're going to go over beginner and advanced funding options for real estate investors. There's lots of different ways to get money for your deals. The rule in this business is if you have a good deal, you will find the funds for it. It's that simple. Everybody wants to put money into a good deal because uh, there's a lot of money to be made when you have a, when you have a good deal when you have a good opportunity so let's go through a bunch of the different sources now there's a time and place for every different source of capital there's a time and place for all of them and you also got to determine which one works best for you in a certain situation for instance maybe you don't want to put any 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 money into a deal and then you know maybe you know you're willing to give up a lot of equity or give a good return to somebody for putting up the capital. On the other side, maybe you want to make the best return and make the most money on it, um, and you want to use like a bank, let's just say. And in that case, you might have the lowest interest rate, the lowest amount of money that you have to pay out, but you might have to put up a lot of your own money and put resources, other resources to it. So we're going to go through things like that. And as I go through these, the majority of the different types of funding and financing uh, and leverage a lot of these can be combined. You can use a private lender and combine it with a hard money lender or a bank. Um, you could potentially use uh, a credit card and have that as your down payment money. So let's just go through all these uh, real quick. And uh, as I'm talking, you'll kind of hope, you'll follow along to, to realize that the money is sitting waiting for you if you have a good deal. Okay, so let's go through banks. So banks, there's pros and cons of every types, type of these deals. So if you want to use a bank, you're going to need to have good credit. You're going to have to have a good project. And typically, you're going to have to put a good amount of cash into the deal. Now, the benefits of a bank is they're cheaper. Um, you know, the, your cost of capital is significantly less. And for the most part, you know, banks don't typically run out of money. There's usually lots of funds available if you use a bank. Um, you don't want to use a bank on a project that has to close very, very quickly. And you obviously don't want to use a bank if you're not looking to put much money down um, and don't have good credit. So there's banks. Okay, then you got private lenders. Now, private lenders can be great in this business because you can creatively structure and deal with them. Obviously, you want to be honest and ethical with, with the private lender, and you want to make sure they put some sort of promissory note and mortgage or deed of trust against your property so you can make sure you're, you know, they're protected. You want to look out for their interest. But at the same time, you can kind of dictate the terms. Maybe they just want a 10% rate of return, no points. Um, that That's a good option. You could dictate it. Now, there's a lot of pros with private lenders because you have some flexibility if you have the relationships with them. Now, the cons are typically private lenders are a little bit harder to find. And typically, they might micromanage you a little bit related to your project because they want to know what's going on and they want status updates. And uh, again, the Typically, the person that's putting up the capital, you know, they do, you know, dictate what they want and potentially make some rules. So you want to make sure you're taking care of them and you're being transparent with them. Uh, but private lenders are a great source. And, you know, sometimes there's a lot of investors that uh, use bank leverage. Let's say the bank will put up 70 or 80 percent of the project. Then you find a private lender to potentially put up the equity um, or maybe even give you a second mortgage for the difference. So you'll see how a lot of these things overlap and you get creative. And that's why I talk about be this this topic is beginner and advanced. Because you know the 101 is, hey, I'm gonna get a loan from this person, this bank, this lender, and I'm gonna put up this cash. That's 101. As soon as you start getting advanced, you get a little bit more creative um, and looking outside the box to try to find other means of capital. <clears throat> okay, uh, the next source is hard money lenders. Hard money lenders are great for fix and flip projects for, for real estate investors. That's you, that's usually like the go-to place to get money. Now, hard money lenders are more expensive, typically. Um, you know, you're looking for an interest rate of anywhere between 12 and 15%, uh, as well as a few points if you go with a hard money lender. Uh, but usually they're also real estate investors and understand the market and understand the uh, the complexity and they can be creative to figure out a good way to structure the loans. Another good part about hard money lenders is they can close very, very, very quickly. So you can move on a project, let's say you buy a property at auction and you need to close it next week. That's a very good option because they can close it quickly, usually within a matter of a few days when, as soon as total work's done. So hard money lenders are typically a really, really good way to get uh, quick capital. Yes, it's more expensive, but as long as it works inside your deal and inside the profit margins, who cares? 
yeah, you might be giving up a little bit of extra money and interest to them. But when it's all said and done, you know it's worth it. And let's be honest, the difference between a 12% or 13% interest rate and a 6% interest rate that you might get from a bank, you know, for every $100,000 you, you borrow from them on a year basis, let's say you're paying 6% higher annualized, and it's 6,000 bucks for every $100,000. So, and hard money lenders typically don't require you to have as much cash in as a, as a bank does. Okay, so let's, so next, let's talk about uh, leveraged equity. And what do I mean by that is maybe you have a, a rental property or a primary residence that you don't have a mortgage on, and maybe you decide to refinance that property. You take out, let's say you, you're, uh, someone's able to give you $100,000 to refinance that property. You take that 100 grand and then you buy your new investment property in cash, or you take that and use that as your down payment for your new investment property. Those are options. Another common one is a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. So you go to your bank, you get a home equity line of credit on your primary residence. Let's say they give you a line of credit of $50,000. You take that $50,000, you use that maybe to buy another property in cash or as a down payment. And again, you can combine all of these. Maybe you go to a bank, you buy a $100,000 property, the bank's willing to give you 70 grand, maybe use your HELOC to pay the 30. Or maybe you have a hard money lender that gives you 70 grand, you use your HELOC to pay that third, the difference. Um, so that's what I mean by leveraged equity, by ways to do that. Another creative thing, and we do this at Hard Money Bankers as well, is we do what's called cross collateral. So what happens is, let's say you buy in the, a property, you need 50 grand cash to close over here, but you have this rental property free and clear. Instead of us doing a transaction, a separate transaction on that property, sometimes we'll do cross collateral and we'll put a blanket loan, a blanket lien against the rental property. And that will allow us to up our loan amount on the subject property in order for you to get a higher loan amount, a higher leverage piece. So leverage equity is a really, really good thing. Um, okay, let's talk about joint ventures. So joint ventures is a pop, is, is obviously a very um, popular thing in the real estate investing creative space. I have a hundred grand. Someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to buy this property. I need 100 grand. Uh, will you joint venture with me? Will you JV with me? I put up the 100 grand. They go find the property. They do all the sweat equity. We uh, flip the house and I get paid back my 100 grand. And then we split the profits 50 50. Let's say I make $30,000 on the deal. I make my 15 grand. And the investor makes their 15 grand. Now, joint ventures can be good because you can dictate the way that they're structured. Um, obviously there's pros and cons. The pro of it is typically if you find someone to JV with you, you might not have put much, much, much money in. Maybe they'll put up all the money on the deal. Now the con typically is, you know, if you're giving up 50% equity in that property, 50% of the profits of that property, chances are you're giving up a lot more than if you just paid some interest to a private lender or hard money lender or a bank. But again, depending on the situation, it could work and you can have multiple joint venture partners. Um, Seller financing, another popular one. Let's say you go to a, a property owner and let's say they don't have a mortgage on it or they have a small mortgage on it. And you say, hey, I want to buy this property for $100,000, but I want you to hold back paper. I want you to hold back financing, seller financing. I'll put up $50,000 today. You do seller financing for 50 grand. And when I flip the house, when I sell the property, I'll give you your $50,000 back. And seller financing can be first mortgages. It can be second mortgages, potentially. If you want, it could maybe even be unsecured <laughs> loans or a third mortgage on the property. It just depends on what you can get creative on and what you can structure with the seller. But seller financing is a great way. And let's be honest, there's a lot of sellers that might not actually want their cash right now. They might not want their money to pay the gains on it. They might just want a dividend or a return and finance it for you and get a, a monthly or quarterly or yearly return on that. So that's very standard on some of these much larger projects. On the smaller projects, not as much, but larger projects, it's common seller financing. Um, and lastly, be creative. There's a lot of creative different ways to do it. So we have a client that we do hard money loans for all the time, and he doesn't want to do construction rehab um, holdbacks. He doesn't because he, he doesn't want to finance the construction costs with us. And the reason why is he's got he's got lines and he's got credit lines with. Um, supply houses and Home Depot and places like that. So let's say the construction project's 40,000 bucks. Um, he knows that let's say half of it's labor and he does the labor himself with his crew, right? And then half's material. He'll go to Home Depot, put it on his Home Depot credit card. Or he'll go to his, his warehouse, his supply house, and he'll put it on his credit card. And you know, it's same as cash or deferred financing or something. And he just finances it that way. So he's not even paying interest on that, that money. He's fronting it with a credit card. He's not paying interest on it. So that's a way to do it. Um, let's be honest, you get 
you know, you can get credit card advances. Sometimes, you know, maybe they're 4% a year, so you pay four points on the money. For a year, you get a $100,000 credit card advance or whatever it is, 20000 So again, I'm not saying use this to like leverage up credit cards. I'm using this as be creative and smart to figure out the best way to do it. Let's say your bank will give you 70 grand, your hard money lender will give you 70 grand and you can get a credit card advance for the $30,000. That's fine, as long as you have a clean exit of how you're gonna pay off that credit card advance, which you can do when you sell the property. So another thing is like lines of credit, same stuff. You know, there's banks out there and there's people there will just give you a line of credit to pull on, to draw on as you need it for projects. It might not even be collateralized by anything. And then lastly, friends. And now friends and family, that obviously can fall into private lenders, but you know, sometimes you just reach out to a friend and say, hey, let's do this project together. You put up some of the cash, I'll put up some of the cash, we'll split all the profits so you can get creative. So all of these things, beginners, advanced funding options, get, cre get creative, you'll see it. Banks, private lenders, hard money lenders, uh, leverage equity, joint venture, seller financing, creative strategies are all different ways to fund your project. You have no excuse. If you have a good project, a good project, you have no excuse to not get the money for that deal between all those different funding sources. And keep in mind, most of these funding sources, you know, might not even require a lot of cash um, when you combine them together. Now, if you do one of them individually, typically you're going to need some money. But if you combine them together, everyone out there, the real big real estate investors, qualify for all of these and they use all of these including their own cash but they there's a time and a place for all of them sometimes they need a bank sometimes they need a private lender sometimes they need a quick hard money lender sometimes they want to leverage some of their other assets sometimes they want to joint venture with somebody else for resources or cash sometimes they want to sell or finance them there's a time and place for all of them and you're going to need all these fun, funding sources so it's important that you understand all of these and you can figure out a way to get creative to mold them together and mix and match them together. So when you have your next deal, you make sure you can get that thing funded and purchased and either flipped or held as a rental or do whatever you want to do with it. Because every good deal, you'll figure out a way to get money for. Until next time, guys, hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you need anything, reach out to me directly, jason at hardmoneybankers.com. Thanks.